We're going to show you how to get organized with iOS. I'll show you how a simple alligator pair can take you on an adventure. Before I route things out with a one-tap way to make your photos new again. It's time for iOS Today. Today. Jazz hands. <laughs> iOS Today comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass to ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless? Whether they're working in the office or remotely, Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of iOS Today is brought to you by Raycon. Raycon's wireless earbuds are perfect for conference calls, video calls, music, or binging podcasts. Now's the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Go to buyraycon.com slash iOS. You'll get 15% off your order right now. And by Mint Mobile. They provide the same premium network coverage you're used to, but at a fraction of the cost because... Everything's online. Mint Mobile makes it easy to cut your wireless bill down to just $15 a month with their three-month introductory plan, and you'll get the plan shipped to your door free at mintmobile.com slash iOS. Hey, I have, before we get into the uh, show... Well, hi, everybody. Sorry, hi. it's just a chance for me and uh, what's his name to catch up. Micah is my fashion uh, guy, okay? And I am, I, you've told me before that I should not wear black with navy. You call that blavy. Blavy, correct. But I am wearing gray with navy, which would be gravy. Is that and okay? Gravy is gravy. <laughs> Gravy is very good. Uh, in fact, blue and gray is one of my favorite color combinations when oh, it comes yeah. to fashion. Except like choices. it's now it's it, the blue and the gray were the uh, Civil War opponents. True. The, the blue of the Union troops, the gray of the uh, rebels. So I didn't really want to symbolize the Civil War in my outfit. <laughs> I'm just going for color combinations. But gravy exactly. is oh, gravy's okay. It's blavy gravy that you want to stay gravy. away from. Thank yeah. You. So the reason why is because <laughs> navy blue is is awfully close to black. It's too close. Yeah. And so it ends up, it's just... It a, makes the eye vibrate. It yeah. does make the eye vibrate. Yeah. And... There, this is the thing: is that other blues you can pull off black and and uh, a a really good royal blue yeah, or a lighter pretty. blue. Yeah. And honestly, we've uh, stopped being bothered by black and brown. But Which bothered? I, I was taught so as a youth not <laughs> never to, to black combine and black and brown, but now it's I fashionable. See, yeah. See, and I I can't do it. I yeah, can't. me neither. That's that old soul, it's, I guess. You're older yeah. than you. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> but but gray and navy is gray and navy. Okay. It is great. I have to remember yeah. that. So okay. Keep that. There you go. You've got the mnemonic now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Enough personal talk. What is the subject of the day today, Mr. Today's Micah subject, Sargent? Uh, you know, I thought, hey, we're all scattered with all the different yes. things that we're doing. Yes. And so why not look at some ways to help us organize using our iOS devices? So this is get organized with iOS. You'd think given that we're all at home so much, that uh, that we would be organized, right? We have plenty of time to put stuff in drawers and you would think, tighten up our closet uh, space, but no. No, because we're all experiencing a uh, certain level of yeah. trauma. Yeah. Uh, be, that is just the, the state of things. That is the way that things are yeah. because of what we're dealing with. And so uh, oftentimes our brains will look for things it can do to sort of take some of that trauma and not have to deal with it to sort of reduce the the pain as it were and one of the first things that often ends up going whenever we do start to experience trauma are those organizational aspects are those means of uh continuing to yeah. unless you use that naturally as a coping mechanism those are the things that oh, usually go first yeah uh I, so, for yeah, instance it, i've been locked in this studio for 96 days 
<laughs> Not well, who's counting. And actually, it's 96 days and uh, four hours. But who's counting? Uh, <laughs> this is place has turned into a pigsty. Because I've just, My there's nobody is... comes in here. So it's just right. me. No one's in there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and that's how that's my thought about my office. If I were to sort of peek around in different places, yeah. there's just you know I've gotten new devices to review and things like that, and you just throw the them over there. Endless supply of hats that are stacked in the corner. Exactly. The other day, Burke says the, the ladders is still in your office. You haven't put it away, and the and the ceiling tile that you moved to rewire <laughs> the converter that's still down. And I see some. Insulation. I say, yeah, because I don't want to have to put it all up again if I have to get up there again in a few months. So I just left it. <laughs> if anybody else were in here, I'd worry about them hitting the ladder or something. If we had guests yeah. in here, I wouldn't leave the ladder up. But it's just me. Yeah, and it's who else me. comes into this office? My dogs occasionally, but they don't care. <laughs> so we're good. Organized. Let's get organized. Oh, yeah. Let's get organized. Now, what's <laughs> right. interesting is you and I took different approaches to this. Yeah. I, what are I we organizing is the first question. What are we organizing? Well, and that's the thing is that get organized is such an open topic because right. there's so many different things that you can organize in your life. And so I kind of like that we took two different takes where I'm sort of talking about uh, placing things into uh, an organizational system, whereas get organized for you might mean getting organized with your finances or uh I guess cataloging your wine library. We'll that's, see. That's a little bit of a yeah. A little, that's a spoiler. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's start with the first one that you had because right. I think this is an app that everybody should check out at the very least. There are a couple of apps. So in the in the early days of personal computing, I was just talking to who was it? Was it Phil Libin? Yeah, I think it was of Evernote. There were two things you would do. You got the when the, you know I'm talking like the Tandy, you know TRS80 or or the, you know, your Commodore computer, your very first computer. There were really two things uh, we did with uh, our personal computers. Uh, one of them was uh, balancing your checkbook. Like, that was the thing they said, you can balance your checkbook at home. Like, that's really kind of dopey. <laughs> I, the other, I forgot what the other one was, make spaghetti, I don't know. But the balancing your checkbook meant that you would doubt, you would... <laughs> Initially, hand enter, you'd get your statement from the bank, hand enter everything from the bank. And I think the 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 rationale was, what if the bank made a mistake? Oh. But in 40 years of entering, checking information, <laughs> I've learned one thing. The bank never makes a mistake. And if the it does, it fixes it. Yeah. So it's not really to check that. What it really is, is... To budget, to keep track of spending, to see what you spend money on, that kind of thing, to be more aware of it. And I guess there's value to hand entering it. You certainly are aware of every transaction. Yeah, but painfully aware. Well, you oh. know, we got checking oh. accounts, credit card accounts. So there's a lot of data entered these days. The the next generation of um, Microsoft Money or Intuit's Quicken was to download it from the bank. And, you know, that saved time, but it still was a bit of a process. Eventually, people realized, you know, why download it from the bank by hand? Why not just let a program do that all for you? And as a result, Intuit bought a company called Mint that does that. There's others. There's a, a there used to be a sponsor, an investment company, Personal Capital, that does a very similar thing. It will connect up with your bank accounts, your credit card accounts, your investment accounts, and give you graphs and information and budgeting information. Um, I actually like Personal Capital. I would recommend that. Both of them are free, so you could try both of them. The one thing that stopped me when I first started using Mint, and this was way back when, when it first uh, came out, was the notion that, um, that I have to give them my passwords to my bank account and all that mm -hmm. stuff. That slowed mm -hmm. me down. What encouraged me and eventually convinced me is they use the same back end the bank does, um, Plaid or something similar. Yeah. Plaid. And as a result, they didn't use Plaid at first. They used another system, but it was the same one, bank back end. As a result, they already have your password in effect. 
<laughs> so you're not really giving them anything they don't already know. <laughs> and I don't think it's, a, I really don't think it's a security uh, issue. If you trust your bank, you can trust Mint. If you trust personal cap, uh, your bank, you can trust personal capital. I'm going to show you Mint. They're basically uh, the same. Uh, this is from Intuit. So as a result, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of familiar. Oh, let's let it use Face ID. You certainly want to keep this secure because you you know the whole idea of mint is that everything is in here now how do they make money on it well you should be aware they make money by suggesting credit card deals and other things here's one that's hysterical refinancing may lower your monthly payments according to quicken loans rates for 30-year fixed mortgages are now 4.250 percent that's at least a quarter of a percent more or more below your rate well it would be if i had a mortgage but I don't have a mortgage. So this is just an ad. <laughs> it's, you know, in, in, they pretend it's tied to your spending and what you're doing. But it's just an ad that's going to bring you to Quicken Loans, which was our sponsor for a long time, Rocket Mortgage. Um, so just to be aware of that, you know, that's how that's how they're making money. And honestly, I don't find that nefarious. Oops, do my face ID. I don't find that nefarious as long as you understand. You always want to know when something's free. Well, how do they make money, right? So right. that's that's how they make money is with – and these are not big ads. You can see, for those who aren't watching, this is just a little – it's in my uh, kind of reminders thing. It's just a little info alert. Then there's some nice ones. We saw you paid off your account with Barclays Bank. Nice job. I like that. <laughs> and then there's some not-so-nice ones. Over budget, high spending, um, that kind of thing. So you can see there's categories. There's shopping. Oh, this would just make me kind. I think I might just feel really guilty. Yeah, and by the this. way, these numbers, don't pay any attention to these numbers, folks. Because <laughs> I just, I just, there's reasons for why these numbers are so large. Uh, I haven't just bought a lot of stuff. Well, I have. But, but, <laughs> but, but, okay. So what it's doing is it did try to categorize. Notice there's clothing. That part of the wheel here. This is electronics and software. Masks. This is other. And then this is just generic shopping. And that's part of the problem is the, that the transaction. Isn't this cool? Isn't this nicely done? That's cool. The transactions, cool. they couldn't categorize. So I can actually press the button and go to the transactions and say, oh, yeah, that's software. Oh, yeah, that's, well, oh, I think a lot of them were Amazon. So they don't know. Amazon's not giving them the detail to know what that is. In fact, right. most of them, that's probably why it was yellow because it was Amazon. I'll go back and show you some more uh, fun stuff. Uh, you have uncategorized, so you might want to go through those. And and he they give you and ways you categorize to them. categorize them. It's one three thousand dollar transaction. Oh, I know what that is. That was uh, that was, and that maybe that's why it thinks I have a high mortgage. That was actually uh, rent. So, but not not for me. For, for right, me. yeah. <laughs> so uh, not my. You're renting your and, own and house actually, yourself. actually, that's why this is a little confusing because. Uh, a lot of business transactions are in here as well. So because my credit card, uh, we use my credit card for Twit. So that's why this don't 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 pay too much attention to the actual numbers. There's uh, there's business stuff mixed in. I could change that, but it's nice. This is all the budgeting. You can set a budget if you want. It does this automatically. So uh, essentially, what I've done is I've connected my accounts um, to the uh, so by yep. Yeah, Pay off, cut down your bills, paying off debt. You could create a goal. Look at that. I would like to make a goal to have less debt so I can crush credit card debt or conquer my loans, that kind of thing. Uh, it also um, automatically downloads this stuff from the uh, banks, from the credit cards. You can add all of your accounts. I even have accounts, most of my accounts, in fact, with two-factor. They've handled that. For a while, it didn't do very well with two-factor, but now it does a very, very good job with two-factor. Uh, here, we're keeping track of my retirement. You're doing a great job saving this month, and then it'll tell you where your retirement is, and I can even add a retirement goal, which is nice. These oh, are uh, cool. This is the same crush credit card debt, but there's also save. Boy, that rainy day came, and we found out people hadn't been saving for a rainy day, had they? So right. maybe from now on, you're going to try to do what they always say, have three months' salary. Well, 
we've run through our three months' salary, so maybe that's part of the problem. Conquer my loans, prepare for retirement, save for college. So take a trip, buy a car, improve my home. So this helps you plan for the future, which is really nice. I think this is everything that you would get from a budgeting thing. Look, I even have a, a credit score. Which is which is kind of handy. So oh, you can, right in the app. Right That's, in the app. I didn't yeah. know it did that. This is using the TransUnion Vantage score, which, weirdly enough, tracks exactly with the FICO score, but they won't tell you what your FICO score is. So consider this similar <laughs> to your FICO <laughs> score, uh, not exactly, but similar. So all of that is really handy. This is frankly everything you wanted. From mm -hmm. doing all, all that hand place. entry in 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 you know Quicken or in Microsoft Money, but you get it without any effort at all. Periodically, I'll have to go in and they'll say, "Oh, you need to fix up an account because my bank, for instance, after 30 days says, I'm not going to." You know, you have to re-up. I'm not going to let right. you keep downloading yeah. transactions. So We're every month right. or so, I'll go through, and a couple of accounts will be severed. I'll reattach them. That's fine. But I don't spend any time downloading. Data entry, zero. But I do get to see a really great view of what I've been spending, uh, uh, what I set goals, where I would like to save more. I think this is fantastic. I really Absolutely. do. Uh, and it really replaces that need. So... Uh, there's Mint. That's I would recommend both the Mint and Personal Capital, which is very similar. It's a little more investment focused because it's an investment company. There, they make their money. Personal Capital does by uh, convincing you to use their services to buy stocks and do wealth management. So it's a different model, but the same idea. They're very subtle in their ads. It's not bad, and I think the information you get is fantastic. So if you're focused on investments and, and doing better with your investments, personal capital will give you the similar information, but maybe more investment focused. If you're just trying to budget, get your house in order, uh, Mint is an excellent choice. Very cool. Your turn. <clears throat> yeah, so the app I'll talk about first is called Sortly. Sortly. Um, Sorta. Sortly. Sorta. It's sorta. Yeah, exactly. Sortly is an app that lets you... Uh, organize and and tabulate and control your uh, inventory. The interesting thing is that it works as both a personal inventory management system and a professional inventory management system. So there is an option to have this for businesses. Um, this has some loaded up examples just so you can see uh, how it works. So the fact that there's $11,000 of total value in this inventory, that is if you had it as a business ses uh, set up. But what's cool is that this is a really good tool if you are, uh, I, I think about folks who have, you know, renter's insurance or homeowner's insurance or uh, personal property insurance or those kinds of things where you need to get a an estimated value of the items in your home and be able to have the proof that you own those items so that if you ever needed to uh, reclaim them in that way, then you would be able to. Uh, but also for moving, uh, to have a box with, you know, your office stuff in it and know that all of the products uh, are all of your stuff is in there whenever it gets moved to the new place. So um, this is your basic dashboard to see some of the stuff. And what we can do is, uh, you know, I'll tap on, for example, this coffee mug and we can, uh, where is the zoom in button? Oh, crud. They've updated, they've updated this since I last used it now. Um, oh, there we go. Edit. So <clears throat> an individual item like this coffee mug, which is at Twit, um, I was taking a photo of this just so that you could see. Do you want see. it back? Because we can, <laughs> we can free <laughs> yeah, look, your coffee mug. It's it's uh, been in the dishwasher so much that the, the label's almost completely worn <laughs> off. But you can add is. multiple photos well, to what it. What was on that label? What was it? I don't know. So I like it. I, no, the only name you have for it is old coffee old mug. Coffee mug. <laughs> you could put in, I guess it's a 50 cents value. <laughs> um, but look, you can add custom hey, tags. I'm so glad you got that. Now, see, this way that could go in your will. Exactly. Leave it precisely. to your children. My old coffee mug. Dad's <laughs> old coffee mug. Uh, and then this is the thing that I think is very cool. You can create custom QR labels and barcodes for these items and what you would do is if you had an inventory system, uh, say you were in IT and you had, you know, your, your company's handing out a bunch of computers, you could make uh, 
custom labels for the items, print those out. It lets you choose, you know, US letter A4 sheet or label printer. Um, you can choose, you know, the sizes and all that kind of stuff and then print those out affix them to the item and then use sortly to scan the barcode, pull it back up. This app works on both uh, iPad, on, on all iOS devices, iPadOS devices, but also online so you can uh, access this stuff on the web. So it makes it very easy to keep track of if, say, there was a Dell XPS uh older tablet or excuse me, older laptop in your setup. And it has, you know, all the different stuff in here, including the serial numbers and all of the bits and pieces so that that way you can keep track of them. But again, the thing that I like is this idea of I, I've gone into the, the more settings. I choose create unlinked label. I uh, create a label that I would then call, well, we'll do us letter here really quickly. Uh, small, and then preview the label. And you can see that you can make adjustments. You can change the, the item name or the folder name and then print those out. And then think about how you could stick that onto the side of one of your uh, moving boxes. And then everything, when you scan that, you can see everything that is supposed to be inside of that box. So it's just a very good way to organize your whole home and know exactly what you have, know the value of these different items and be able to track them from place to place. Kind of lets you uh, forget about the whole idea of when you move, you have to lose some items in the move, which seems to happen a lot. Um, and honestly, I would benefit from doing this with uh, some of the stuff that I have in my garage and storage, for example, because there are times where I'm going, I know I had da 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 and I can't seem to remember where that is. With this, I could boop, scan that label and then find that exact box where it is. So It's a home inventory program. It basically. is a home inventory yeah. program. And precisely. for insurance reasons, that's also important because if somebody exactly. were to steal your mug and you wanted to have a claim, you would exactly. like a picture, the serial number of the mug, mm -hmm. whatever My was receipt. on that sticker, your yeah, receipt. Yeah, the receipt if there was to one. prove the value, all that, that stuff dollar value at this point <laughs> deprecated over time yeah yeah or depreciation is very important and it probably is deprecated just because it's god knows it's been in the dishwasher a lot <laughs> yeah exactly and that's why you left it at twit uh-huh uh -huh. did you when you uh, left when you walked out the door on whatever that was march 17th did you tearfully wave goodbye to your mug uh no um <laughs> you just decided i'm i don't care enough it, it went to into pack the, it up the, yeah, I mean, I took the things home that I needed to take home. But even to this day, there are still some desk ornaments there at the yes, office. Yes, I noticed you left your Google Home with the googly eyes. Uh, but you know what? You're always welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't uh, do it when I'm here. No, exactly. You've, you've come and gone since. We yeah, People yeah, come and I've go. A couple of times. To, yeah. There are items that get you know dropped, dropped off, off at the studio stuff. i gotta come yeah, and get yeah, so yeah. we're all masked and all that jazz yeah, yeah. But, uh i'm excited to you for you to talk about this next one because this app just blows my mind if you're going to talk about liquid text stuff. yeah and i think you you might have to help me a little bit because i don't use it on a regular basis but i agree with you it's really impressive liquid text is a note-taking program god knows there's plenty of them on uh the ipad but this one is really cool for people who want to use the pencil mm -hmm. in conjunction with reading long documents, annotating documents, making extracts from the documents. That's what it's really for. When you open a document, you'll see that the document is in a left frame, and you can resize these frames. The document is in the left frame, and your notes are in the right frame. It makes it very easy to select a portion of the document drag it right over to put it in as a note. You can add comments to it. In fact, if you tap on it, you'll see you can comment, you can auto excerpt, there's tags, you can have different colors, you can define a, a, a term if you want. So I can add or I can look up a definition um, and I can also add these comments to, so when I tap my comment, you see it's linked. Mm -hmm. uh, there's even a little stretchy thing i can make that comment so if i comment on this piece of text here well now it's glued to the other ones <laughs> it's pretty funny if i comment on the um, piece of text here i can attach it 
to the comment. I can, you you see this is this is why they call it liquid text because stuff yeah, it just, just moves kind of around moves around. Completely. It's really a great way to read. Uh, you know, lawyers, for instance, who have to read briefs might use mm -hmm. this to go through a brief, annotate it. You can share it. Multiple annotation uh, are possible. Uh, there's a variety of tools. I actually don't use this, so I'm not a master of it. But it really gives you some amazing capabilities. Combine this with the trackpad and the keyboard and a pencil, and you really have, in many ways, the perfect way of scouring through documents. In this case, I'm reading a text on how to program, how to think like a computer scientist. And so that's a really, you know, this would be like an academic style text. And so that might be something that you would really want to have. Uh, annotations for as a student. Uh, if mm -hmm. you were uh, if you're reviewing contracts, you might want to have these annotations for that. So I think that's a really this is really fabulous for all of this. I'm not sure how I get the uh, figures. You notice I can do these. I can circle stuff to lasso it, but then I guess uh, it doesn't the figures. It doesn't automatically pull out. I guess I'll have to. Uh, you're the expert, aren't you? Do you use well, this? No, no, not an expert. I just I ended up uh, seeing a preview of this it's app. Pretty at one impressive, point yeah. And downloading it and playing around with it a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, you can do. I think about uh, teachers who are reviewing students' documents, um, who you know want to, are wanting to leave notes. I think about uh, the, you can do mind maps with the thing. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, here it shows you've got you know, your, your notes on one side, some graphs that are involved. And each of these things can be linked together with what's actually happening on the page. So if you think about students doing reviews of their own work, trying to see uh, what is available, uh, and then the, this shows draw a line with ink to connect even different documents. So you can yeah, say, yeah. hey, you know, you said this in this document, but this, these data points suggest that this is not the way. I mean, this is really good for doing reviews of stuff uh, and for making sure that the, the the communication is there in these documents. And I think that that's so cool, uh, the way that like we keep talking about the liquid part of this, it really is uh, liquid text. Yeah. It's, it, it lets you just pull different parts and see different bits of – look, here we're showing uh, dragging and dropping of different documents into one page. So that can be kind of annoying where you've got um, one document that – yeah, is liquid text, it's not a document, it's a pro you see it, save it as a project, so you can have multiple documents in it. You can also, if you want, attach the annotations to the original source PDF. You may want to do that if it's your PDF. Uh, you may not want to. But this is, yeah, this is, and this is the way to do research or study or review exactly. documents. It's really great. Yeah, and it I'm really uses like the iPad. Author. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, an author who's, you know, trying to put together their story and they uh, get a PDF from one place, some photos from another, and they can open this all up in one project. They can select a bit of text that talks about it, drag it over and connect it with other information from other documents along with the photo. And then simply tapping on those little annotations will pull them to that specific document. I mean, that is is such a cool idea. And I kind of wish that uh, I had, you know, uh, had, had more use for this day to day almost because it just seems so neat, the uh, tools that are available here. So, yeah, project managers, artists, I mean, authors, uh, teachers, and then like you said, lawyers and things like that that are going through a bunch of different briefs and, and uh, making adjustments. I think that's such a cool idea. A couple other things I really like as a lefty, they allow you to do a left hand layout. So oh, nice. if you like, if you're using the pencil and it makes sense for you to use it with your left hand, I really like that. They also have a variety of organizations. You can have a vertical as well as horizontal. So that's that's a nice feature too. I think that this is well thought out. Uh, when it came out, people raved about it. I think in a way, um, uh, it's gotten better and better. And mm -hmm. partly, it's gotten better and better because the iPad has gotten better and better. And that's a really a good example of what makes a great iPad program because it was so well designed from the beginning to use the pencil that when they added the trackpad and the and the keyboard, it just, oh, it's even better, which is yeah. really, really nice. You can choose whether you want to use the pencil. You can also use your finger. Uh, obviously not as, not as um, 
uh, refined, but uh, you can. There's a little setting to let you change the ink to finger instead of uh, pen. I, I Liquid Text really an interesting program. It's, it's not expensive either, is it? I can't remember. Uh, I think it's it's free to download, and then, and then, then if you want yeah. the pro version, it's uh, thirty bucks one time purchase. Yeah, that's pretty um, reasonable. I think so for what all it does. Uh, absolutely. Now I mentioned when we first got personal computers, there were two things we wanted to do. One was our checking and mm -hmm. you have the other one. Spaghetti. Spaghetti. We wanted to yeah. make spaghetti. No, we wanted to keep track of our spaghetti sauce recipes. Absolutely. So this is absolutely a thousand percent stealing directly from you. Um, you had recommended paprika, uh, recipe manager at one point, and I don't you love have it? downloaded it and yeah. loved it with all my heart. It's funny because uh, it this is, is there's been a lot of evolution in, from personal computers on. There are formats for recipes that are interchangeable and all this stuff. There's the menu master format and so forth. And I subscribed and bought a lot of these programs, but now that I found Paprika, it's like forget it. <laughs> I'm yeah, done because. These days, you go and you find a recipe, and if it's not on one of those big recipe blogs, then it's going to have three pages of text that don't have anything to do really right. with the recipe right. before you finally get to the dadgum recipe at the end of the article. And that's annoying. Well, Paprika is awesome because you can go online. It has a browser built into it. Exactly. I love right that. There. Yep. And then you can go and download the recipe to your uh, to to your Paprika app. And so it does a, a kind of a stunningly good job if you're on a, a, a site, a blog or whatever, um, I, I do this all the time, and I bet you do too. When I want, yesterday I wanted to cook uh, oatmeal cookies, but I wanted to do it with, I didn't have rolled oats. I only had Scottish, you know, the steel cut oatmeal. Mm -hmm. And so I had to look up on the web steel cut oatmeal cookie recipes. And they're on the website, and they're very, you know, it's a mess. Of way, people don't format in any particular way on a website. But I was easily able to go there in the paprika browser and just say save download and save yeah, the recipe skip all of that and it you makes know, it my... perfect just like you're seeing right there it gets the picture it gets the source it puts Some the ingredients even. on the left it understands ingredients well enough that you can put it in, in a shopping list this is such and that an means amazing you can program scale and convert them too yes so Yes. That I love as well if you're wanting to make more. Uh, so, for example, I made this. I haven't done it in a while, but I'm planning on making this again. Um, it's Ooh. a triple chocolate mousse cake. And Ooh. what I love about it is, and I made it gluten-free, of course, but what I love about it is that it is not incredibly sweet. Uh, I don't like to have a whole, whole, whole lot of sugar. And when you'd think that like a very... Uh, very, very chocolatey thing would be super, super sweet, but it's not. It has this great chocolate ganache on top that's nice. It, it hardens. There's a mousse in the middle, and then there's this delicious uh, <laughs> chocolate cake underneath with um, – with, it actually used some um, – what am I trying to say? Some coffee granules in it uh, that adds a little bit to the flavor of just a little bit more bitter almost, like a dark <laughs> chocolate. Oh, it's so Can't good. Can't wait to make it. Can't oh wait my to God! Make it. Let me I'll have to let me, share. Let me demo it. how uh, cleverly this takes yeah, yeah, any me. funky web page. So I found uh, on, it's a nice site, spoonfulofkindness.com, a recipe for steel cut oats. But like most, so this really, what's nice is paprika is adjusted to the modern way of cooking, which is you don't have a you know you search online for a recipe, and when you find one, it's in a browser. But this is the you know this is. Uh, the last thing you want to do is have this web page up as you're trying to cook these cookies. There's so much extra stuff in here that it's not a useful recipe. But all you have to do, so I'm on the browser page. And by the way, I did the search within Paprika. I'm not even, I haven't even left it. You download the recipe. And it's really smart. At ext look at that. It extracted, it got the photo, it got the source, it got even info on prep time and cook time. It found the ingredients. It found the instructions. It extracted from this cuckoo website. <laughs> it extracted exactly what I needed to know. It even got nutrition information, which nice. it's calculated from the ingredients. And now all I have to do is save, and that is now in my recipe box. 
as a as as a recipe, steel cut oats cookies. It says where I got it, so we're not you know getting taking away credit from Spoonful of Kindness. Plus, if you want more information, you can hit that link and go to it. And that is how that is that is what you want. I don't care about reading Meal Master recipes or or anything. I mean, yeah, if you have a bunch of Meal Master recipes, I guess. But most of the time, I think modern cooks. There's so many recipes online now, basically exactly. an infinite source. Just go and search, find the one you you like. And then this thing will take it and put it in your card catalog. And it's there forever. Uh, you can print. Yeah, you can do all the stuff you want to do with it. And it, it does that so nicely, too. The the printed out version of the recipe card is very nice. Uh, the formatting is all great. You The categorization and organizational features that are available for this, um, you can even say, you know, I want to make uh, this – triple chocolate mousse cake on Friday. So let me add that to my calendar for, uh, snacks on that day. And then it will, you know, give you an alert. Hey, when you go to the store, you're going to want to get these ingredients to make this, this item, uh, and make sure that you can do that. And then what's cool too, is check it out. There are timers right within the app. So you can cook from this recipe and then also keep those timers right there. And like you said, the nice features of, of making sure that you have your grocery list planned out is super cool. And then you can also keep track of what's in your pantry. So that adds to the organization. Paprika, about. Paprika. Paprika. Everybody should buy this. Um, all get it. Once you get the subscription, by the way, web as well as iPad, as well as Android. So they have apps everywhere. So it's very frequently that I'll be looking at my computer, find a recipe, put it on my computer, and then it's automatically synced up. when you Once you have an account, it's automatically synced up to Paprika on your iPad. The iPad is a great cooking tool, you know, especially if you've got a nice stand for it. You can put it right there in the kitchen and cook with it. I love that. Um, you know, it's not just your pantry you want to keep track of. Right. Your wine cellar can also be <laughs> an important resource. I've looked and used a lot of different wine cellar uh, category uh, cataloging uh, programs. Uh, my favorite uh, is called Corks, C-O-R-K-Z. And uh, it actually ties into a very famous uh, wine cellar website. So it, in a way, my Corks account is tied to my uh, seller account. And that way I can do it both on the web and locally. You can scan barcodes, which is really nice. You can nice. take a picture of the bottle, all of that. I, I can't remember the website. Let me look it up. Real seller Tracker. So Quarks is Seller Tracker on the iPad. You can browse their wines. So this is really cool. You learn a lot about wine on countries, regions, varietals, but you can also have your seller entered in here. And one of the things I really appreciate, so this has all of my uh, 180 bottles in my cellar. I think that since I entered these, there are fewer now, <laughs> but this has all of, all of them. But what I love is once you've got them in, you will also have a drink soon category. Part of the problem of having a collection of wine is some of it's getting you know, you're, you're aging it, but some of it is ready to go. You don't want to overage it. So drink soon. will actually go through my wine cellar and say, you know, you should probably drink this sooner than later because it's not going to get any better. Mostly these are whites, but here's a 2011 Pinot that, you know, it's been down for nine years, probably a good time to, to drink that. So this is great. If I'm looking for something, truthfully, what you should do is drink this stuff first. Because this stuff is ready to go. And I wow, find that very, very helpful. Cool. You can also, if you have ratings, you can also rate and know what your best wine is. This is absolutely my best wine. Based not only on my ratings, but based on the name Chateau Leoville. I was going to say <laughs> Leoville. Which is, Where did you find that? It, there, it's actually a well-known uh, French Bordeaux, believe it or not. And oh. Winston Churchill's favorite. Or one of oh. his favorites, anyway. So uh, this is not based on my rating. This is based on Wine Spectator. Look at here's all the professional reviews. This is all pulled. I didn't enter any of this. This is, is all it a pulled. Red blend? Sorry. Yes, is it's it a red. red blend? It's a Bordeaux. It's a red Bordeaux. Uh. Um, you can set drink dates. You can uh, do all sorts. You, you keep track of. I have three bottles of it. Probably should drink that pretty soon. Um, here's a. Here's my second best. 
a champagne. I don't think Lisa knows this is in the wine cellar or she would have drunk this a long time ago. <laughs> a 2002 Ruinard Champagne. Wow. Um, I think we must have drunk that. I'm going to go look in my cellar to see. That's the only trick on this is you got to keep it up to date, right? Because right. as you drink wines. But this makes it very easy to say, drink it. I drank it. You it's know, gone. You could put NFC tags on the bottom of all of your wines and then you could set it up so that Every time you have one, you scan the bottom Actually, of that. I didn't do that uh, because that would be a lot of NFC tags. <laughs> but I do <laughs> have true. little collars with numbers, and every wine oh, bottle nice. has a number on it. And so it's very quick and easy to find that number. It also makes it easy to find the wine in the wine cellar. True. Yeah. So organizing your wine cellar is probably a good thing to do during this uh, quarantine. <laughs> Just Yes, all of you people out there with your wine cellars. You might be tempted to drink it. You think that's a like a hoity-toity kind of a thing to have? It's not a, in my case, it's not I a mean, cellar, it's a closet. So yeah, we California, live in wine so country. Not as much, yeah. but certainly where I'm from, people who have wine cellars are the... I, it's not a cellar because we don't have cellars in California. It's just a closet. True. <laughs> your, your water closet. <laughs> my, water, my wine closet is next to my water closet. Vino closet. So I really uh, like this. Corks, C O R K Z. Uh, it's uh, from Seller Tracker. The nice thing is, Seller Tracker is also a website, so you have access to it on the web as well. It's just their iPad version. So, do you like red? Like red? Oh, wines? I only drink red. Oh, Actually, see, I should be you honest. Know what good is. I should be honest. Lisa only drinks red, and because of that, I mostly drink red. I actually do. There are some whites I love. Like and, what? Well, uh, I Chardonnay? Or you no, know? I'm not a Chardonnay fan at all. I like a Semillon, a Viognier. I like the crisp whites, uh, Sauvignon Blanc. There, yeah. but I don't. I don't really like the oaky uh, Chardonnays. Um, I'm not typically a white wine drinker yeah. at all. But the New Zealand um, uh, uh, Sauv Blancs, I think, are they're quite, quite good. good. Yeah, and then we, Lisa and I, do like the stickies. The sweet What's dessert that? wines, oh, like so, turns. How can you do it? Well, oh. you have to have the right complement, like that delicious chocolate coffee cake you were talking about earlier. Maybe that's what would it Would be takes. very nice, very and nice with a Madeira, have, perhaps. Uh, what is it you said I had last time? I know. Um, the thing where you can't get joy from stuff. Oh, you have anh anhedonia. <laughs> yeah, you also yeah. can't have anhedonia. You can't if you have anhedonia. Like port wines. So, so turns, which are white and very sweet are great with, forgive me, Lord, foie gras. Uh, and then Lisa and I discovered when we were in Budapest, th that is really a bad name drop, isn't it? Um, <laughs> well, when last time we were in Budapest, not the first time, the last time, <laughs> exactly. we discovered a fine wine, the wine of the royals called Tokai, which Tokai. is a very sweet, delicious... You know what? Next time you come over, which will be, you know, a year or two... Uh, <laughs> Next time you come over, we'll serve you a fine Tokai. I think you'll enjoy. I just can't have foie gras with it. No, I won't let you have foie gras. No one can have okay. it. Just Lisa. Good. And then, of course, my favorite white is Chateau de Chem. But uh, that's so expensive. I only have it on very special occasions. I don't have any Chateau de Chem in my closet. What else do you have for organizational uh, purposes. Let's see. I've got an app. It's called Craft Docs. So Craft Docs is an app that is actually currently in beta. However, you can go and join the test flight beta. You head to craft.do and uh, sign up there and you can be a part of the test flight beta. So regardless of the fact that it's still in its beta, you are able to go and get it. And it is a bit Notion-like, but... It is a sort of um, templatized way of creating documents. So let me show you uh, with this example of meeting notes. So I've got here uh, a document that's set up with uh, a photo right here at the top. I can, of course, make adjustments to the photo. What I love is that it's got integration with Unsplash. Unsplash has, for the longest time, been my favorite website for getting stock photography because it's all offered uh, with absolutely no uh, requirements for 
crediting the the photo for for paying for it. No royalties, anything like that. Uh, it's just beautiful photography that's available and stock photos that are available for free. Um, so with that integration, you know, you can set up your craft document however you want to. And then the way that it works is that it's actually got these little. Um, what is the word I'm looking for? Not nodules, but um, nodes. Nodes. Thank you. Yes. So here <laughs> we can add. You don't want nodules. You do want nodes. So you that's do want a, nodes exactly. Good, yeah. uh, so you can add media really easily. You can add a snippet of text, uh, a file into it, and a sketch. But then, if I go over to uh, add text, there are ways that you can add text. So. I can do, you know, adjustments to the formatting, of course. I can add a bulleted list. I can uh, make adjustments to if I want this part to you know, be a title, uh, to be emboldened, to be a pull quote. And then I can also, whoops, I've already tapped on that one. Uh, I can also add a separator or things like that. So this lets you go in and create a document very easily. But then the way that it lets you make adjustments to the whole document at once is very cool. So I've swiped to the left in order to select areas of my document and say I want to pull those all out of this page. I can easily make adjustments by tapping organize and grouping those, ungrouping those, cutting them from this document. So we'll group those together and boom, now they are sh they're uh, collapsed. Then I could tap into it and you can see those items. So it's a way to create a document very easily, but then to go in and make adjustments to the organization of the document uh, as is needed. And again, it's currently in beta right now, um, but they're adding collaboration features so that multiple people can be in the same document at once. But I like these this little node-based system of each of these individual entries is its own item that can then be adjusted and, uh, you know, reformatted however you might want to, to be searched and uh, found within the document. And then I also like, too, that it's got some built-in templates for, uh, you know, setting up your own CV here, a project proposal, an update to send to the team, and a task list or a quick note that you might have for someone and yeah, that is, we'll just do a blank document just so you can see, uh, my note. So do you, do you think this is better than Notion? Where would you use Notion? Where would you use this? So this is not, uh, this is what I see this as is more of a note taking app. Yeah. Uh, whereas Notion is more of a like project management or, or, uh, data management system entirely. This is a more focused thing that I think does a very good job of letting you create notes that are easily uh, organized and adjusted exactly as you see fit. Cause that's one of the things is, you know, in a basic text editor, I, I have to swipe down and copy and cut and right. move things around exactly. Exactly. This makes it very easy to drop in new items, new photos, and make adjustments to that. It works with Markdown, that kind of thing. So as a simple note taker that is uh, easy to organize and, and uh, manipulate each of the data points, that's why I think this is very good at doing, whereas some of the other kind of basic note takers might not have all that functionality. How about Google Keep? How does this compare to Keep? It looks a lot like Keep. I've never used Google Keep, yeah. actually. You should try Google Keep because it's similar. I suspect not as... It doesn't do Markdown, for instance. I don't know if it's as full-featured, but... Um, you know, it's it's Google, which means it'll probably be gone soon. So you might want to take a look at that. <laughs> no, I'll take a look at it later. <laughs> <Kidding. laughs> One last thing, because, you know, the very first thing I thought of when you said organizing is organizing my books. And um, there, there used to be, there was a wonderful program for the Mac called Delicious Library that actually spawned a whole generation of beautiful programs for the Mac. It's kind of gone, uh, long gone. Uh, there are copycats. But the truth is, just as we've replaced things like Menu Master with Paprika with more web-based tools, I think it's probably time to replace that old uh, database of books that's local only with Goodreads, which is a social network around books that allows you to scan in the ISBN, you know, scan code and so forth. So you, you know, you can easily add books 
It'll actually, because it's owned by Amazon, it'll automatically import all your Amazon books, which saves time if you buy books at Amazon. But it does have a, a simple way of scanning in books. Uh, there, It has a very nice uh, categorization system. Uh, books I, I own, I've read, I want to read. Um, uh, you can have, you know, it's very satisfying when you've got a book to mark it finished. You can create right. shelves, which are categories of uh, books. But the thing that makes this different than just a database is it uh, it it has a, a whole social network involved. Uh, so I'm in the middle, uh, for instance, of um, this book. So I'm going to update my uh, progress. I haven't finished it yet. You can put in the page number you're in. And, you know, why would you want to do that? Well, it's really more for, um, I think, for peop for the social aspect of it, right? It depends on how crazy you want to get about keeping track of things. But I think it's a... Uh, it's, it has all the benefits, in other words, of a database. But once you once you go into a book, uh, you can see the notes you've taken, the notes others have taken, a description of the book. This was all added. Uh, I bought this on Amazon, so I didn't even enter this. It automatically added it from Amazon. It automatically nice. made it reading. It it has the reviews. I guess they're Amazon reviews, but they're also Goodreads reviews. Uh, it has a preview if such is available. Um, so I have to say, this is kind of the book database on steroids. Some people may say, no, I don't want to have this be public. And of course you can have your account be private, but I think the real value of this is the sharing. You know, people follow me. I follow other people. I'm always looking for new books to read. And so this is a very handy way to do that with the recommendations from friends. They even have challenges. So for instance, they have the 2020 reading challenge. Tell us how many books you want to read. We'll help you stay on track. Goodreads, uh, you know, I've had up and down experiences with it. I joined it very early on. Amazon bought it. Um, it and slowly Amazon has added some of the features that I think it really required. These are not books I own. These are books that are popular. So, again, if you're looking for recommendations or the next, what's my next book going to be, this is a great way to do it. And if you... If you follow people as I have, um, you can see what they're reading, which is which is really nice. Um, it thinks I'm currently reading Wolf Hall, but then it recommends a actual biography of the real Thomas Cromwell, which would be a great thing to get. And I can now add that to my list as either want to read, currently reading, or have read. Uh, maybe I'll add that to my want to read list. Having that on your want to read list. It's just kind of like your wish list reminds you of books that you want to read. Like science fiction, you can see there's a science fiction category. You can see what's trending this week in science fiction, fantasy, historical fiction. I'm a big fan of. So this is um, kind of the book database that we always wanted. The quick, you know, it's very easy to add a book. You can search for it. You can scan the cover. I should try that with uh, one of my more obscure books. Um, and Or you can get it from Amazon. Uh, so I think this is a, a really nice way to uh, to keep track of your books, keep track of your library. One of these days, I have so many books, I would like to go through them all and scan them all in, add them yeah. to the database. It would be kind of uh, nice to do that because I don't, I have, the problem is I have half my collections here, half of it's at home. I don't know where books are. I'm spending a lot of time saying, I know I have that book, but where is it? Right, especially it. after uh, we had that bookstore near work closed down and all of those books that everybody found. Oh, it makes me you have a new whole new library. <laughs> it, well, it just makes me think about, you know, wanting to have my own personal collection of books organized. Wait till so you stop moving around. <laughs> yeah. Because the I'm worst sure thing about really... books, records, CDs, DVDs is moving them. <laughs> <laughs> so having a big collection, it's lovely to have a room full of books. Uh, I just, it makes me feel happy, but um, it's a, it's a lot to move them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, They're good heavy. reads, highly recommended. Awesome. Well, I think uh, it's time for a break before we get to the news. I want to welcome a brand new sponsor. I don't know if you noticed earlier. Uh, I have my Raycons. Did you see these? Nice. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I got. I have two sets of Raycons. Um, they have the uh, professional uh, Raycons, 
And then I got the everyday Raycons, which are a little less expensive. Uh, these are wireless earbuds from Raycon. Uh, Ray J's company, of course. And uh, they start about half the price of the other premium wireless earbuds on the market. And frankly, they sound just as good. I've said this many times. There's a lot of markup in Apple's AirPods and AirPod Pros and, a ver and all of these. There's a lot of profit in these. And I admire Ray J. He said, you know, I bet we can make great headphones for less. And he's done it. This is These are the everyday E25 earbuds. And I have to say, they sound fantastic. Six hours of playtime out of the case. And you put them in the case and they charge. The case, I always keep the case charging so that when I put them in the case, when I'm done listening, I put them in the case. I love it. They come with a large set of ear tips so you can find the one that fits for you. That's really important with these kinds of earbuds. I wish Apple would do it with their AirPods. They don't have sizing. So for a lot of people, it's too big or it's uncomfortable or it falls out. With these nice soft rubber tips, so you can easily change these as I did to fit. I made them slightly larger. I guess my ear hole's big. And I'll tell you what, you want to get the right fit because the bass sounds fantastic when you get that seal right. These really, you feel them as much as you do hear them. And the compact design is really fantastic. There's plenty of battery life in this small little uh, earbud. I just, they're very comfortable. They're great for conference calls. Yes, you can use them for phones and conference calls. Seamless Bluetooth pairing. They're stylish. Now, they come in different colors. Of course, I chose the red. I think you wanted the white. There's also black and other colors. Mm -hmm. um, they're discreet. There's no wires. I yeah, become, I noticed I, they're so small. Yeah. So well, nice. Should I put them in so you can see them? Yeah. Let's I, see I what think they when look I like. put them in, you'll realize, even though these are the bright red ones, you don't. And by the way, oh, I love how they seal. So this really, I don't hear anything. Wow. Going on. The red wow. ones are going to be a little bit more obvious. I can't hear but you. But even still, it's just me, a little earworm. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> I know he can't hear me, but. Uh, um, but I am hearing some fine music right now. <laughs> let, me put these, let me put these away. <laughs> Snoop Dogg, Cardi B, Melissa Etheridge, J.R. Smith, they all use their Raycons and love them. I just think this looks beautiful. It fits perfectly, and it costs a little less, a lot less, than the high price brand, but sounds every bit as good, maybe even a little bit better. We're going to make you an even better deal right now. You can get 15% off your order. 15% off. Now they're even more affordable. Now's the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Go to buyraycon.com slash iOS, 15% off. I love it when our sponsors uh, give us deals that we can pass along to you, and that's a really right. great deal. Buyraycon.com slash iOS, 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. The e everyday E25 earbuds at B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N.com slash iOS. Thank you, Ray J. Uh, really Thank appreciate you. your support for the podcast. And uh, I think you're, you're going to like it. Welcome, iOS Today listeners. Buy Raycon dot com slash i o s gotta yeah. love supporting a black owned business yeah too. ray j's <laughs> great I, be, I you know i'm not i don't know ray j personally but i gotta say it's pretty cool yeah. <laughs> right to be able to support a musician him. Yeah. doing that yeah yeah i think that's really cool well done ray uh or i should say ray j i don't know him that well only his <laughs> best friends can call him ray uh thank you raycon back to the show we go all righty. Let's see. What do we have? What do we have in the news? Uh, up first, Apple did announce that by 2030, the company wants to make its uh, supply chain and products 100% carbon neutral. Oh, yeah. Good job, Apple. Way ahead of the guidelines. So that's great. Yeah. yeah. So this, of, of course, a lot of the company itself is already carbon neutral, but uh, the other parts of the business, the manufacturing and and uh, all of those parts of the business are not. So that is kind of their next goal, the company's next goal uh, to do even better, which includes investments. Um, it says 
the U.S. China Green Fund is going to invest $100 million in accelerated energy efficiency projects for Apple suppliers uh, with a partnership with Apple. Um, there are going to be lots of different they, – they lay out in this uh, blog post kind of all of the stuff that they're wanting to do to reduce uh, the carbon footprint, to improve upon its processes uh, so that there's, you know, low carbon aluminum, um, carbon free aluminum, which is uh, apparently a very uh, new process. It says the first ever direct carbon free aluminum smelting process. That's very cool. And uh, new solar arrays and things like that. So quite a few different things. Uh, changes being made to add renewable energy sources and uh, expand on their energy efficiency processes in order to go 100% carbon neutral by 2030. That's just 10 years away. Nice. Well done. Uh, now, I'm curious, have you ever used Apple Business Chat, Leo? What the hell is that? <laughs> Sounds okay, boring. It's not. Uh, so Apple Business Chat is a way for companies to have conversations with customers through iMessage. And so it essentially gives you a way to text a business, kind of like you would do online chat with AT&T or, you know, a, a carrier or, or Amazon or one of those places. Apple Business Chat lets you just from the Messages app have a conversation with a business and it keeps a private uh, conversation going on where it doesn't share your phone number, they, you know, not back and forth and things like that. And it uses the iMessage service so that you can see when a, a message is delivered is when, a, you know, when it's read and things like that. So Apple has been using this process for a long time. In fact, uh, the way that I had to set up my, when my AirPods Pro was doing the horrible tinkle tinkle sound uh i had to set up a conversation with a an apple representative incidentally and, no tinkle tinkle sound no tinkle in tinkle in the raycons <laughs> <laughs> exactly. just another nice selling point go ahead yeah. <laughs> uh, and so it said you know start a chat and it popped up in the messages app and i you know had the conversation with them there so apple business chat the, probably the reason why you haven't heard about it is because the technology has been in beta for quite some time. It was introduced in 2018 and has been in beta. Uh, Apple and Zendesk have gathered to make it so that it is no longer in beta. There's general availability. So uh, customers who use Zendesk, which are quite a few uh, online retailers and things like that, will be able to integrate business chat. So it just means that it's going to be easier for iOS users to speak with representatives of, of certain retailers nice. and things like that yeah. with Apple's technology. And we should mention Zendesk is a sponsor of the oh. Twit Network. Yeah. Well, there you go. I want to do a real quick correction because the chat room has told me, while Delicious Library is not available on iOS, it is still available on Mac OS. It's in the App Store, $40. So it is considered to be the most beautiful book library. It has for years. I think it's not aged well because those nice wooden bookshelves are very skeuomorphic. And we've kind of gotten away from that. But it's still prettier than Goodreads, which is not exactly a gorgeous uh, yeah. app. So if you're, you can get a trial uh, at the website. Uh, for Delicious Library from delicious-monster.com. So I I didn't mean to prematurely um, destroy that company. <laughs> They're still around. <laughs> 16 we're years still and here. still going, yeah. Uh, please, we're still here. Uh, then there is, sorry, I'm trying to pull it up so that I can talk about it while I open it. And if you are looking for an alternative to the iPad uh, keyboard, L Logitech has the new Folio Touch oh. for iPad Pro out. It is a backlit, it has a backlit keyboard, which is cool and uses the smart connector for the iPad Pro. Uh, so you're not, you know, plugging in anything extra and it's not Bluetooth. So you don't have to worry about that. So it'll be powered by your iPad. It also looks to, it uh, looks like it offers more protection for the iPad Pro uh, than the standard Apple keyboard does. It sort of wraps around the outside of the iPad, and it's got that easel style of, of positioning, so you can lay down your iPad like so. It comes with a trackpad and keyboard, 
And yeah, it's got multiple ways. I've honestly been eyeballing this because I like the different means of positioning it. So you can have it in that media view. You can lay it down in easel format or you can use it with the keyboard uh, or lay it entirely flat, which is something else that Apple's keyboard is not able to do. Oh, and did I mention it has function keys too? <laughs> There's something else that the Apple keyboard doesn't do. So honestly, this wow. is looking like a good option. Yeah. How much? Uh, $160. So also a lot less than the Apple. A lot less money. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I'll be curious to see how well the trackpad works because that has been the place where Apple has kind of stood out. Uh, which makes sense. Um, but yeah, the fact that it's got a backlit keyboard, that it works with the smart connector and that it has the full row of function keys. Honestly, I'm kind of digging it. There's type mode, view mode, sketch mode and read mode. Uh, I don't so know if anyone. Sorry, it, is not, it is not a Bluetooth device. It actually is Correct. interesting. It uses the smart keyboard so that's a, a smart connector that's a big deal that's mm -hmm. a really big deal um that was the only drawback in the previous uh, iterations of the logitech uh, keypads keyboards i should say all yeah, right say Boy, that pairs price is, with your ipad pro by a smart connector because right. the magic yeah. keyboard starts at what two three hundred right <gasps> so it's almost oh, half, wow. half as much and check it out it's got a storage spot for the Apple Pencil. Oh, now how much would you pay? Let's see. Oh. Mansky. Do you want to get one for review? Uh, yeah, I think I do. I think you better. Yeah. I think okay, you better. I'll have to pre-order it. Still in still not available. Although, okay. Might be able to reach out to somebody and see if we can't get a little sooner. Ask Lori Gill. She seems to have a good connection with she Logitech. She gets have. all that stuff ahead of time. You know she's going to be. She's probably already got she's it. Already ready for got my one. Break. I guarantee you. The <laughs> Folio Touch for iPad iPad Pro. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Nice. Uh, very cool. And then next i mean we can't not talk about new emoji when there are new emoji there are new emoji the new emojis in town i'm so new excited are and are they pretty in well if you like lungs <laughs> if you like lungs and like hearts you love the new you're gonna emoji love, you're going to love these new those emoji those are really anatomical uh yeah check that heart that is pum, 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 ooh, that is a heart pum, pum. And uh, the beaver. I think we've been waiting for a uh, beaver emoji for a long time. So yeah. if you put that together with a ninja, you got a scare. Oh, and look, the crazy one quarter. Not, they should make that. Not, not, uh, not useful for a not, not, cannot be used for American money. <laughs> a pinata, uh, tamale. Uh, yes. Russian nesting doll, which is cool. The and dodo bird. We talked about this a little bit on Twit. Compare that to Molly, which is a nice tamale. It's not how I make my tamales, but okay. At least it's got a filling that looks like something. Compare that one. Scroll up on the page because you're on the Emojipedia uh, post. The other way. That's that's To oh, me, that's down. That's I don't know. What do I know? Uh, oh, no. you got the Apple page. So Google also did... The, the tamale. tamale, but theirs it's looks like it's got boba in it. <laughs> I don't like Google's. It's it's Google. ugly, 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 ugly. Do they have the Google? These one are the on ones there? that are available so far. Yeah, the Google one's not good. Google has also brought it. back the turtle. I don't know. Do we get a turtle from Apple? Turtle, 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 turtle. turtle. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, the new emoji are here. Woohoo! Yeah, yay! Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! Hey, awesome. I don't see the Google tamale emoji. Oh, I can find it for you. I think it was in the Emojipedia article. That's all right. I don't want to have to launch my web browser and go there and all that stuff. Just go ahead. I don't care. I don't care yeah. anymore. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> no, it, when do we get these? Is this iOS 14? Is that it? Uh, yeah, so this should come with iOS 14. Okay. As Oh, I found it. Um, good golly, what a weird looking I think thing. they blew it on the tamale. It doesn't look like something I'd want to eat. What is in there? Chocolate malts? <laughs> Malt balls? A oh acorns? God. What is it? I don't know. But it doesn't look like anything that belongs in a tamale. Google's artists seem challenged. What is this one? Like, 
Yeah, like that, the hugging one. It's just two blue blobs, jelly blobs hugging. What about the, the one on the upper least. left? What is that? Is that is that exploding? No, not the wood log, that one. What is that? That's the ta-da. That's always been there. That's not new. That's not new? I don't know if they, maybe they redesigned it, so it's that's what's new looking. about it. But yeah, if you uh, go into Slack and you hit colon, oh, you'll get that way. Colon, that one's one. Is it wedding bells? Is it exploding? I don't know what it's it is. It's supposed to be a party popper. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. And the oh yeah, it's a cracker. Yeah. And then the turtle, which you know, I'm sorry, but where's the ears? Do turtles have ears? <laughs> I'm just teasing. Okay, I was gonna say. <laughs> I want to start uh, a new Twitter out outrage me. meme. How can you draw a turtle without ears? should do that i'll retweet it <laughs> there's no uh, yeah, ears I on that turtle and then just wait as people thousands by the thousands say oh leo turtles don't have ears apple already has a turtle so i think they probably google probably just redesigned their turtle yeah um i think that's already yeah. one that exists yeah. All right. why doesn't this turtle have ears though yeah <laughs> i think that you know we gotta write apple <laughs> <laughs> but they won't hear us because they don't have they ears they don't have ears in their turtles Darn it. Oh, boy. Uh, and then Mario Kart Tour. I thought you'd want to know about this. I like Mario I didn't Kart. realize. Because I can't it, lose. I always come in first. Exactly. <laughs> They'd probably fix that by now. <laughs> it's only had portrait mode up to this point. Oh, now, I hate that. That's so a lame. A year after its launch, it's gotten landscape I'm mode, sorry, not so. lame. It's pathetic. It's not lame. It's pathetic. So uh, well, pathetic. I don't, you shouldn't, I shouldn't use that phrase anymore. You know, it's funny how those things hang over from your childhood. I don't mean to say that it's disabled in any way. It's just pathetic. It is. Uh, it was pathetic that it only had portrait mode. That only have app portrait mode. Although I have to say my app cap is only in portrait mode as well. But now, Leo, you can, you can play Mario Kart Tour and Thank win you. in landscape mode. As, as you should. Yes. As rightly so. In fact, they're so happy about it that they've added it to the uh, to the app preview section to let you know you can race in portrait or landscape your choice micah you're so sweet you sent me your recipe for the cake you've never made but I you swear will to... someday no i've made i'm gonna go to my instagram right now and send you a photo of me <laughs> having made that cake oh you have made it oh okay yeah i was just saying i haven't made it in a while and i wanted to make it again i just it's want very you to know good but not too sweet how i know that it came through on my mint mobile phone Nice. I love my Mint Mobile. Mint, if you're still using one of the big wireless providers, have you ever asked yourself why they're so expensive? They are. They're more expensive than they need to be because you're paying for the stores. You're paying for the magenta automobiles or whatever it is that they spend their money on. Mint Mobile doesn't have, there's no foxy green automobiles driving around. No, Mint Mobile saves on all retail locations and overhead and then passes those savings directly on to you. It makes it easy to cut your wireless bill down to as little as $15 a month. I, I literally, I'm paying around between $80 and $90 with almost every other carrier for service that costs me a third as much, less than a third as much on Mint Mobile. Every plan comes with unlimited nationwide talk and text. They're running on the T-Mobile network, so it's crazy. I mean, it's the same service I get with T-Mobile. But with Mint Mobile, stop paying for that crazy unlimited data you'll never use. And it isn't really unlimited. You can choose between plans with 3, 8, or 12 gigabytes. It's 4G LTE data, same data speed you'd get with any other guy. You can use your own phone or they have great deals. This is the iPhone SE. They have a great deal on the iPhone SE. When you put the iPhone SE together with a $15 a month plan, you're paying $30 a month, including the phone. Use your own phone. Keep your phone number if you want. All your existing contacts. They sell phones too. Ditch your wireless bill and start saving with Mint Mobile. I did the $15 a month introductory plan, and then I liked it so much I said, hmm. What else? So I got the f the full data spread, 12 gigs a month, which I never go through even. But you know me, I like to have a lot. Uh, unlimited talk, unlimited text nationwide. And the total was $300 a year. I bought a year's worth. $300 a year, $25 a month. That's any, if you're paying more than that, it's nuts. Get your new wireless plan. Start with the introductory plan. Why not? $15 a month. 
That's the three-month introductory plan, and, and they'll ship the SIM to your door for free. Or you, you'll get the new phone there. They have phones, too. Mintmobile.com slash iOS. Mintmobile.com slash iOS. Cut your wireless bill down to $15 a month with their three-month introductory plan. It's such a great deal. Mintmobile.com slash iOS. Thank you, Mint Mobile, for supporting the show. We appreciate it. We do appreciate questions. You money. Questions. Yeah. So I've actually got two bits of follow up this week. It's, two bits. Uh, quite, two bits of follow up. For quite that, nice. You can get a shave and a haircut. <laughs> exactly. Uh, da, 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 uh, thank you for the. Bum, bum. Thank you for the laugh. <laughs> I didn't deserve it, You're but welcome. thank you. You know what? I'm always about the dad jokes. Uh, so first up, follow up from Paul. Uh, says hi guys. Firstly, Hi. Hi, Paul. everything you, oh, oh, by the way, Paul is the one who I believe last week asked us, how in God's name can I download the iOS 14 beta profile uh, so that I can install iOS 14 public beta on my phone? And we gave him some suggestions of things to try. And here is a response. Hi, guys. Firstly, everything you suggested, I tried. I even contacted Apple support, but they were unhelpful. So I downloaded Firefox Focus and tried again and voila. It worked. So this appears to be some sort of specific Safari issue, which remains unsolved. So folks out there, if you are trying to install the public beta and you go to the proper page, I believe it's beta.apple.com, and you run into an issue when you get to the part where it says download this profile, when you tap on it, and then it says this must be installed on an iOS device, and you can't download it for some reason, then you might try opening the page in a different browser, Chrome, Firefox Focus, Brave, et cetera, et cetera, and give it a go there because for Paul, that worked. So if you That's want to hysterical. get it on the public beta, who knows why? God only knows. That's I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, well, that Focus is the privacy browser that like is – that's so bizarre that that worked. All right. I know. Yeah, I don't get it. He had some what cookie happened. set in his uh, – there was Safari, some cookie probably. that said this yeah. is not an iOS device yeah. for some Isn't reason, and then it All right. bonk, bonk. Good it. tip. Yeah, very good tip. And then Leo, if you could pull up this YouTube video for yes. me, uh, this is from David in Kansas City. Oh, uh, I love it when you send YouTube videos. Yeah. So I David love it. says. Uh, and let me read the text before you play the video. Okay. So David says, I wanted to respond to Jeremy's question from last week's iOS Today. Jeremy asked, is there a way for me to change watch faces based on my location? Well, it is possible to use shortcuts to have your watch automatically change its face what? when leaving or arriving at a particular location. Oh, that's so cool. I had no idea no about idea. this. No idea. I had no idea. And so David in Kansas City has helpfully recorded a screen showing how you go about this process. So roll that beautiful bean footage. Here you go. You so launch the Shortcuts app, choose Automations, choose Personal Automations, and then create one based on location. Nice, David, blocked out your location. And then, of course, anytime you arrive at that location, add the following action, which would be set watch face. So that's that's the key is that there is a set watch face shortcut on shortcut exactly yeah, and then the it shows you all the different faces that you have oh, saved you choose so one great and then you can tap oh, next i'm gonna do and that boom and then I, you get a, a list of other videos you can watch oh no that's youtube <laughs> <laughs> that's just youtube ah. that's awesome uh, yeah. Really cool. So, really cool. Very cool. David yeah. in Kansas City, thank you for writing in uh, with that bit of feedback. And now I've got even more things to try in my uh, in, in shortcuts for sure. You know what you could try right now? Putting on a hat. Putting on a hat. It's time for our app caps. These are, we wear these hats to signify uh, our membership in the resistance. <laughs> no, we wear these caps to signify... The app of the week. Now, I think this one has Morse code on it. Ooh. Yeah. I thought it was the R2-D2 hat, but I, I think it's, dash, dash, dot. it's it's Morse code. But uh, reading from left to right, dot, dash, dash, dot, dot, dash, dash. <laughs> <laughs> so take, take, there take, you go. Read, read into that what you may. 
<laughs> you heard it here first, folks. No idea dot, what that is. Dash, dash, dot. Yeah. Uh, You're boy. wearing a tiger head. Arr. Did you shoot that tiger in your pajamas? I, uh, no. Um, that's Why he was wearing I my pajamas, I'll never know. <clears throat> anyway. App cap. Uh, I'm really excited about this app. Uh, you may have heard about the app uh, Facetune or uh, InLight or some of those other apps. It's made by a company called Light Tricks. Well, Light Tricks has come out with a new app in this past month called Quick Art. And Quick Art, as its name suggests, is a way to create art. Quickly. From your photos. Quickly. <laughs> quickly with just one tap. Um, I, you know, there are a lot of apps out there that claim to do this, and I was kind of like, mm, I don't know. But I started to play around with this, and I was really impressed with it. So I'm going to show you some of the, they've got some that are featured here, like dispersion that sort of takes your photo and splashes it out to the side. Uh, split colors, which can give a cool effect, some double exposure stuff. But then there are some like, Oh, uh, where is it? It's in scene. No, it's in portrait like wrap around, which I think is a very cool feature where we would take a photo and you can see that I've already got some here. So I'm just going to show you ones that I already did, uh, including this one of me. Oh, it's probably going to try to add another ribbon to it. Yeah. So let me kick this off to the side for a second. Now oh, that's what we'll do. We'll just long press on the image. So oh, that's you can cool. see. Yeah. So I took this photo that originally didn't have this golden so that's ribbon a around it. Real photo. Yeah, that's a real photo of me at the Golden Gate nice Bridge. Nice photo, my, by the way. Whoever took that, it's that's my cool. mama took that one. That's great. What an and eye. then uh with just a tap, I was able to add that to add that ribbon to the photo. Now, of course, it's added another one because it's trying to guess what's there. Right. I'm going to go back again. <laughs> I like how the ribbon is climbing the it's Golden like Gate Bridge. Across. That's hysterical. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this because, like I said, I've already got photos that are done with the feature already on it. Um, oh, I know what I can do. Um, so let me, let me just change the device that I'm using here uh, because it will save your photos as you make adjustments to them. And so then you can have them saved in your creations. So let me switch to the iPhone setup here. And that's the other iPhone. So let's go to Sutton. There we go. All right. So then this is one that I did of my mom. Uh, so again, taken at the, uh, the bridge again, but then I've added this ribbon around the outside of her. And um, this one here where the original photo had... That's unfortunate. I was It'd be hoping cool that if you I could, could put a tiger hat on people in that. In that, <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> what I was hoping I would be able to do is adjust the photo so you could see the original, but it only just lets me save and share. So I can't make adjustments to ones that are already done. So let me switch back then to the iPad and we'll take a photo that is already um, made and I'll, I'll do a scene with it. So let's see. I kind of like this duo tone effect. So let me find a photo here. Uh, lots of photos of me drinking water. Um, let's see. Ah, we'll take this turkey hat version of me. So it finds the uh, <laughs> it finds the parts of the photo that are me uh, and the so parts cool. of the photo that aren't, and it adds a cool. So it knows the effect. difference, and it thinks the yeah. microphone's not you, even though it is fact in fact attached to your body at all times. Right, uh, which is very strange. People don't know like Micah that. has a microphone hand. That's why they call him Micah. <laughs> when he was born, he had a microphone for a hand, and his mama said, I shall name him Micah. It's true. Yeah. All of it. And then this is the cool part. If you're using an iPad like I am, and you've got your Apple Pencil, which I have misplaced, so in this case I don't, but if you did you can go in and make subtle adjustments to this feature. So you see that it actually kicked out that leg of the turkey. Yeah. I can go in, I can zoom in and then add the turkey leg to the rest of the effect. So I'll go in and make those light adjustments. And then while I'm here, I can start to sort of uh, check. Oh, see, it gathered more than I wanted here. Too much I mean, turkey leg. Too much turkey it's leg. It's not good. Yeah. 
what I love is that it does a really good job of, of sort of picking out the front and back in the first place. So you really can just do one tap, but I'm picky. And so I want it to be as perfect as possible. So I'm going in and yes. making these adjustments. It's a perfect turkey leg. Uh, exactly. And then we'll do this one here. Oh, this Let's is pretty this cool out. that you can do this, actually. That's really cool. Yeah, so I can make the adjustment exactly as I want, as I see fit. Wow. I bet you were really uh, good at coloring in school. <laughs> I it was so boring. I hated coloring. <laughs> but you're good at it. Even can if it's boring, if you find if you're good at something, you should do it, even if it bores you to tears. <laughs> That's the rule. Didn't you know that? I didn't know that rule. Yeah. yeah. Thank Look God I that. didn't listen to that. Now he's oh. wearing a turkey hat instead of a tiger hat. Oh, we got to fix the. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll add yeah, the rest of my yeah, chest yeah. to the photo. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, and now, your microphone hand. There you yeah, go. Oh, oh, I'm going to leave. Clean that up. I'm going to leave the microphone in um, because I think that it's good to have it as part of the foreground. And then we'll go back. And then now you can see all of the turkey it's is there. Raining men. <laughs> or I don't <laughs> know I can, what it is. What's oh, now it's snowing. Raining. Yeah. Snowing. Bubbles. Bubbles. Do there you have to be red effects. if you have the bubbles? Like, is it is the background color? Yeah, it's the attached. background color and those are okay. attached. Okay. Which, yeah, that's unfortunate. But you could go into, you could pull this into, you know, Photoshop Express and adjust the hue if you wanted to afterward. But then now this is done, I can export it as uh, directly to Instagram or Facebook. Or in this case, I'm just going to save it to my photo library. I go back to the main screen and then I could do another effect if I wanted to. And I'll just show one more here, which is this dispersion effect that I think is kind of cool. And I actually took a photo from when I was on the Balclutha. And that is a ship in uh, San Francisco. So cool. And I've added this sort of uh, dispersion effect behind me. Uh, but then if I wanted to, I could add more. Oh, it these. was windy on the Balclutha that day. <laughs> so, Wendy, I blew away. <laughs> yeah, so this is a really neat, neat app. They, neat. they add new effects all the time. I should get that. Um, yeah, it's just fun to take some photos that you already have and add some stuff to them. Oh, I even have, uh, I took a photo, a mask photo of mine. Let's see. And added that effect to it. Where did that go? Oh, yeah, here it is. So this one... I, who knows why I like, it doesn't necessarily make sense, but I think that it's really cool how you could do these double exposure effects. So that mask profile photo of mine now has this interesting, uh, waterfall in the background. You can make adjustments to it, however you see fit. And like I said, erase or add to it. That's a go. cool effect. I really like that. Yeah. yeah. So that folks is quick art. You can download it for free. Um, it has a subscription tied to it. I think it's six bucks a month. If you want to continue to use the features, oh, man. Uh, they always get but here's that the thing, way, don't they? Here's the thing. Here's what I, so someone on Twitter kind of responded to me about that. And I said, here's what you do. You download it. Yeah. You use it for a month. Yeah. With all the photos you already yeah. have. You yeah. You cancel the subscription. Yeah. And then you wait until you've taken a whole bunch of new photos uh -huh. and then you get it again. Uh -huh. So you're only paying six bucks like once a year at uh -huh. most to have all of these fun things that you can do. You're so smart. That is Quick Art by Light Tricks. you so you got smart. For me? I have an ad adventure game where you play an avocado. Ah, an alligator pear. An alligator pear, a.k.a. an avocado. This is called Avo. And the, really, the reason I picked it is because it's kind of innovative and interesting. And it uses the Apple Pencil in a unique and unusual Ooh, way. Let's fun. get the sound on here because I'm going to start at the beginning so that you can get a sense of this. This is the real world mixed with the um, animated I world. I already love it. I, I knew you would. That's why I picked it. Hi there. I'm Billy. And this is my colleague, my hero, and my best friend. Avo. So they've oh animated the. Isn't Avo. that cute? It's an animated avocado in the real world. You can move Avo by drawing lines like this. <gasps> this is so and you can draw innovative. Lines too. Hey, try moving Avo over to this blue flask here. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a line. 
No way. And Avo is going to move. Well, okay, it didn't do the loop de loop. You're about to go on such an adventure. <laughs> there's science, there's teleportation, there's fruit, there's bad guys, there's time travel, and you'll be the first person to finally discover the truth behind. I don't want to ruin the ending for you. Hey, before you get started, I want to give you something. Come over here. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's so cute. <laughs> it's actually quite clever. And I will show you after. I've saved these for you. They'll be critical on your Apple journey, so make sure to pick them up wherever you find them. Making of video of this. Oh, now I have to go walk around and pick up jelly beans. 1,000 beans. Yeah. I got a lot of beans. Whoops. Got to pick up some more here. You don't have to use the pencil, obviously. You can use your fingers. Okay, you're ready now. It's a little more accurate Good luck. with the pencil. And I'll see you soon. Kiss the avocado, oh please. God. Oh, man. That's the only thing I find disappointing. <laughs> All right. Shall we play the next episode? Yes. All right. Now that we know how to play. Here's Avo, our little alligator pair. He's in a scientific laboratory. It, uh, we're ready to play. Use your finger to draw lines from Avo to make him walk around. So, whoa. <laughs> Let's get some beans, some magic beans. Wait, what's those glasses for? I want to see what those glasses are for. You found a bean. Tap on this bubble to interact with this item. So I can pick up these glasses. You found an Disco. item. Disco. Oh, disco glasses. It's only a thousand beans. Should I buy it? Um, or should, oh, my God. Or should I buy a hat? A wizard hat? Is that a wizard hat? A uh, cowboy hat, bowler, uh, tiara. There is a wizard hat, but it takes 3,000 beans. Oh, and then I have to unlock some too, right? And I should yeah. save some beans because I was gonna say, I don't know what beans are there's other I'm stuff to get. A sombrero. So, all right, I'm going to buy the glasses because I think they want me to. The glasses have a disco theme. <laughs> All right, that's my top. Okay, I've, I'm going to buy it. Okay, that's on my top. Now, there's also bottoms. Oh uh, I, can, I can put them in a suit, but I, I'm, I need more... I need more... Uh, I need more beans to do that. But Some I have a feeling there's going to be plenty of beans to be had. So... Uh, continue without purchase. Whoa, yeah, there's 10,000 10, beans. beans. Look around. There's five bonuses to be found. All right, shall we look around some more? Yeah, mm. let's see. All right, so I have to walk over and get the bean. Okay, get that bean. Oh, here's a yellow bean. Wonder what that is. Oh, Lots that's a beans. whole bunch of new beans. So you get the idea. It really is easier to do this with a pen. I think kids will like this, but I also think it's kind of fun. You know, it's kind of. This is so cute. There's stuff going on. Right. Yeah. So I have good news. It's a little bit like um, Blues Clues. That's why I think kids would like it. The good news is yeah. that I've acquired the parts I need to complete my wireless power plant. I'm going to call her Mrs. Fusion. I like okay. it. There's a so female the protagonist. She's now, a scientist. The bad news is that the power company's going to cut us off tonight. She wears but cool glasses. But with this invention, she we won't need cool them glasses. anymore anyway. So it's double good news, really. The acting is very good in this. It's very well done. 7 p.m. Perfect. We still have a few hours until... The, the animation is seamless within it. I yeah. just feel like this is a completely really innovative. Impressed. Yeah, it's really interesting. This is all And actually, it's pretty habit. fun. I got this. It's one of those one games, minute. though, you want to pay attention to. You're not going to. Um, right. It's not a, yeah, go. You, you know, about play this while you're, while you're Don't. watching TV kind of thing. This is TV. It runs on rubbish, Abbott. Can you collect some from around the lab? I need to collect some rubbish. rubbish. Okay, so that sounds like. Oh, here's some rubbish for sure. Yeah. Pick that up. Okay. Is that rubbish? 
Three bits Where of rubbish. That's the bent fork. He puts it in his avocado pocket. Where would you put it? Oh, okay, let's, I, let's I didn't think about the avocado <laughs> pocket. Let's play some more. Um, I'm going to go get that bean. Um, oh, there's a blue oh, bean. Oh, the bean's leading me. The beans are leading me on, aren't they? <laughs> Oh, did you notice the shift in pitch whenever he yes. went across the bridge? That's yes. Hard. Now, I wonder. I wonder. Oh, I got him going in circles now. Oh. <laughs> there we go. All right. What's this? Is this anything? Can I pick this rubbish up? No. Oh, my gosh. She's looking over at you. Well, he's... Isn't this kind of fun what they've done? I this really, is so yeah. fun. And what a unique idea. I don't know what to do now, as usual. It has some Toy Story vibes. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Because of these, the animated. And it's smart to do avocados because, frankly, an avocado doesn't have the uncanny valley <laughs> from Yeah, true. Let me know if you see any trash. Whoa, oh. Super Bean. What is, is that? That? that looks like trash. What is that? So there's stuff I can't... I don't know. I can't figure out what I'm supposed to do with it. I guess I should just walk around it. Maybe I can't walk around it. <laughs> He's trying. Hmm. What happened? I seem to be stuck. Well, so much for that. It's a fun game. It's called Avo. Oh, there we go. I got around it. What does it say there? Oh, you had, yeah, you had the. the I have to get right to the right spot, huh? That's kind of. Ah, now yeah. I got it. It's a rocket suit. Oh, but can I afford it? No. It's ten thousand beans. I have two hundred seventy-five. Clearly, they're upselling me. <laughs> <laughs> Continue without purchase. I'm still looking for crumpled paper nice. and a blown circuit. Okay, let's uh, let's hustle through these beans. What? <laughs> What's on my head? What happened to my disco glasses? Yeah, I thought you bought the disco glasses. I thought I did too. What do I got? I got something else. Well, that's definitely a light on your head. Yeah. Oh, maybe because it's dark. She put a light. I thought I bought the disco glasses, but like she has. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. Blown There's circuit. a blown circuit. Let's get over there. Whoa! I got too close. Let's get a little. So this is a little annoying. You got to be there. Yeah, right. it's a little touchy. Yeah. <laughs> Pick it up. <laughs> oh, I'm almost there, kids. <laughs> So this is Avo. I don't suppose we should play much more, but oh, watch out. It's a bean spitter. That's what I'm going to call it. Pretty soon you get to the point where you just do these all at once, right? For extra mm -hmm. speed. I'm on the edge. I think I have to go back to that bridge. Oh, boy. <laughs> Which way? Nice. Available for three ninety nine in the yeah, app store. Yeah, I think it's a, it's, a, I think it's fair. Now, one thing I'll show you that's kind of cool. If you go to the app store right now, there is a making of uh, oh. Avo Solve Mysteries with an AR Avocado. So, uh, if you're curious about how they did this augmented reality game, it's not. I don't know if it's really augmented reality because you're not looking through anything, but. Uh, they shot the scenes with a standard camera, took a 3D scan of the space, and then fused the two, which is so really cool. cool. And by the way, that actress, Billy, is Katie Reese. Um, and Katie Reese is talking to nothing? No, an actual oh, avocado. An avocado. <laughs> <laughs> she says, my biggest challenge was the heavy script because Avo doesn't speak. We had a little stand-in Avo for my eye lines. And once I got the image of how Avo would be in my head, I could animate him with my imagination. For me, Aww. he was there. So Aww. Marvel uh, comics writer Ryan North, comedy writer and performer Gemma, Jenna, Gemma Aerosmith, 
uh, came up with a story. And originally, it was a ninja broccoli, then a slice of lime carrying a shot glass. But they finally <laughs> settled on an avocado. They're going. Kind of what? Can you buy the after dark version? That's the shot. Uh, that would be kind of fun. And it also says uh, up next, Playdio, which is the company that did this, presents a series of standalone episodes designed to explore the magical new creative opportunities in this technology. Avo That's is really cool. fun, and I highly that recommend is super it cool. uh, as a, as just a really neat way uh, to uh, interact with your iPad. Uh, as I said, you don't have to have a pencil, but uh, the pencil works quite well with it, which is kind of neat. I think uh, I'm going to have to get this for Sebastian's nephew. Yeah, I think kids would love it, but honestly, I, I want to play. It. I got engaged. I really thought, yeah. hey, this is pretty fun. I you was know, having fun just it. watching you play yeah. it. So yeah, because like you're in a real world, which is cool. There's kind of interesting adventures. A-V-O, and that is our show. Nice rhyme. Yes. Dot, dot, dash, dot. I got the flow, A-V-O. That is our show. Let's go. <laughs> oh, apparently I've apparently I've gotten Avo in the past, and I didn't even realize. No? Yes? I wonder why I got... Oh, I bet it was for the AR episode that I ended up not being able to be oh, here for. Oh, okay. It really like, isn't AR anyway, because you're not yeah, exactly. shooting anything through the camera. It's it's just really vi animated video and, and 3D graphics. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> Spit it out. <laughs> it, it's nothing special, man. Nothing special. Um, okay. We are done That's for the day. I hope you enjoy iOS today. I hope you uh, watch again next week. You can watch us do it live. We start around 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time on Tuesdays. That's noon Eastern time, 1600 uh, UTC. Just go to twit.tv slash live. There's audio and video streams there all the time. There's always something streaming. But that's when we do the live show. And you're not watching the show exactly. You're watching the production of the show. So there's little interstitial bits that will be edited out, I hope. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Kevin usually does a He does really a great job, job cleaning it up. Kevin, who we don't know who it really is, but that's the name we use because all our <laughs> editors are named Kevin. Um, we do uh, make an on-demand version of the show, as you might have intuited, because it is, in fact, a podcast using... The original RSS, as specced by Adam Curry, created by Dave Weiner and Aaron Schwartz. And uh, RSS uh, versions are available on the website at twit.tv slash iOS. On YouTube, it's not ROS, RSS, but that's okay. It's still video. And if you want the RSS version, get a podcast catcher, some sort of podcast application that understands RSS feeds. And Search for iOS Today or even Twit. You'll get the whole network, iOS Today, for this particular show. Subscribe, and then you don't have to think about RSS ever again. It'll just happen automatically every time there's a new show available. Thank you, Micah Sargent. Micah is also the host of Tech News Weekly and Smart Tech Today with Matthew Casanelli. Make sure you watch those shows because they're great. 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 I also oh, I host guess I some should shows. be saying that, huh? You are wearing the tiger hat, the Tony They're the Tiger hat. Great. great. Uh, and um, I guess that's it for the day. Thank you, Micah, and I'll see you next week. Thank Bye you, Leo, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, host at Twit TV. Got a question for you. Have you gotten tired of how bad your photos are looking every time you post them to Instagram? Better yet, have you gotten yourself a new camera and you can't quite figure out why the images just don't look that good? Well, I have a solution for you. This is my show, Hands On Photography. Each and every Thursday, I sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor. So subscribe today at twit.tv hop to learn more.